Hey, it's Mike Hamber at Flipner.com. Welcome back for another exciting VIP interview where I interview successful real estate investing experts and entrepreneurs in our industry to help you learn and grow. Today, I'm joined by David Corbelly. He is a veteran entrepreneur that has a pretty amazing background, including real estate investing, and he's now focused on helping others generate leads for their businesses. It's going to be a great show today. David is going to share some lessons on how to generate both inbound and outbound leads for your real estate investing business. So don't miss it. Before we get started though, let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days. Rates start as low as 9%. We'd also like to thank National Real Estate Insurance Group, the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Flipner.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, David, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. So... uh, I understand you're a little bit of a nomad right now, just uh, traveling around, living the actual uh, internet entrepreneur life where you don't even have to have a home, right? I'm, uh, I'm sitting in my hotel room on the floor with the couch behind me, so I had the, uh, the light from the window here shining in, and, you know, so you couldn't see my dirty dishes in the kitchen. Yeah, no, no. Hey, hey, whatever, whatever works, man. Everybody, <laughs> everybody wants to have that life of uh, freedom to do what they want when they want, so congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's good. Well, it's an exciting topic that we don't really talk, you know, a lot of people don't talk a lot about. Um, a lot of people that are trying to learn about real estate investing, you know, there's often a piece that's missing, which is leads, right? And you and I both know leads, if you don't have, if you don't have leads, you don't have a business. And so I'm excited that we're going to talk about that uh, today. Um, and, hey, before we get started, though, why don't you tell us your background? I know you've got a really interesting uh, story and we'd love to hear some more about it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um you're, you're spot on on the leads part, though. I mean, and we'll get into that. But without leads, you don't have a business. And I'm excited to talk about that, too. Yep. Um, I got into real estate in 2002. But before that, I was in the military and I was a Seattle firefighter as well. So I joined the military right out of high school. Just I was bored with high school, you know, just had a different mentality. It, 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 sitting in the classroom all day, being, you know, forced to learn X stuff, it just drove me nuts and I didn't like it. I guess it's just, you know, everybody's beats to a different dumb or whatever, but that's that's what I do. And um, so I, right out of high school, I just joined the military. I wanted to just try something else, move on and uh, get out of Dodge, basically. I just yeah. was done there. So joined the military, um, went to boot camp and all that good stuff and then went straight to Germany <laughs> for three and a half years. Had never been away from home, so that was kind of a shocker at first, but uh, ended up being great for me. While I was there, um, you know, whenever I would see a military helicopter fly by, I would just, oh, I'd just watch it, you know, and just sometimes the pilot would look down and kind of acknowledge you, and I was just like, I want to do that. So I went uh, and I applied, you know, after a couple years in, I went and applied for flight school, warrant officer flight training, and I started going through the prerequisites, started doing all the things I was supposed to do, and unfortunately, they didn't do the class one flight physical first, they did it last, and um my eyes weren't perfect. Obviously, you have to have perfect vision to fly military aircraft so you don't, you know, blow up the wrong thing, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so that, that didn't work. And it was, it was disappointing, but it's okay because there was, you know, other things in store for me. So I went back stateside. Um, again, I just, I think a lot of people have this where, especially if you're a business owner or something like that, there's a reason that you do what you do and it's because you just want something more. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that that was in me back then, and I realized it more and more as time went on, and I'll talk about that, but I kept searching for something else other than just being in the regular military, right? It was, it was great, but I kept searching for other things, and one day I was at the gym, and I saw this picture on the wall, and it was these dudes in like this really cool looking rubber boat, and how the hell is cool weapons and camo, and I'm like, well, that's really cool looking, and so I actually called the number on the poster, and I talked to a recruiter, and he was a special forces recruiter. And he uh, came and interviewed me, put me through some you know, physical qualifications and all this other stuff. And then I went through selection process, which is about three weeks of um, not fun. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've seen videos and stuff like that of what, you know, grueling things, right? So went through like three weeks of that and qualified for uh, Special Forces training. And so they moved me to North Carolina, and I spent two years going through all of this incredible training, and I popped out the other side as an Army Green Beret. Uh, good stuff. And I spent the rest of my military career doing phenomenal things all over the world um, with the most incredible people you could have ever imagine. right? It's a, just a whole different caliber of people. So that is where I learned the art of uh, doing things unconventionally, where you look at things... You, we we're just trained to do that. You look at things in a different perspective as the typical person does. So you find a, a side door or a back door, a different way to um, move past an obstacle or a problem in your life, right? That's where I learned to think that way. So <clears throat> spent 10 years in. I got out after 10 years because I didn't want to do 20. Saw my buddies getting out at 20. You know, they're, they're you know, 40 years old having to start from scratch because with our resume, back then not a whole lot you could do with a resume like ours that was legal yeah so um, <laughs> so so i got out at 10 and uh jack of trades for a couple years then i found uh the fire department i joined seattle fire department as a professional firefighter did that for seven and a half years great thing you know great camaraderie it kind of replaced part of the military stuff but not completely so i kept looking right e even though i had a great job in the fire department i kept looking something something more in me and uh, again that you just have that feeling you, you don't you don't realize what it is but it's it's we're entrepreneurs, right? Sometimes you don't understand that until you learn enough about yourself. It's like, right. well, that's, that's what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm an entrepreneur, and it's awesome. So I started looking for different um, things I could do business-wise. I didn't really know anything about business. I'd never done any business-type stuff. And I found a Rich Dad, Poor Dad course, and I started learning about that. And I'm like, well, I, I can't buy a subway. I don't have the money for a franchise. I can't um, you know, do these different things that, that he talked about. But real estate, I've heard about like this no money down type of real estate and stuff. I can probably do that. And that takes us to the, you know, the whole thing where people, you just mentioned earlier how leads are so important. And I think yeah. I started out doing what all of us do um, is I started learning about real estate, how to invest in real estate, you know, with no money down or whatever it is. I started learning how. And this was... This was probably mid to late 2001 that I started learning how. I didn't get my first deal until I think it was April of 2002. Doesn't have to be that way, right? I mean, right. it was probably six or eight months before I even got my first deal. I was kicking tires and talking to some agents and stuff and feeling it out. But that's, that's so anyway, I'll go back to that. But uh, 2002, I bought my first house. It was a lease option deal. And then I did one or two more of those and realized that you know, I was doing everything that I was taught in the courses and, and books and everything that I was learning from, sending out direct mail, putting ads in the 350 nickel, putting ads in the newspaper, putting out bandit sites. I was doing all of those things and I was getting some leads, but what I found was not everybody wanted to do my, my lease option deal. Hmm. So I started learning about different ways to do real estate and I got into subject to, subject to, subject to the existing financing and did a few more deals that way. Okay, this is cool. But now I, I know two ways. Not everybody wants to do one of those two ways. Right. So I kept running into the same situation where I need to keep learning more methods, learning more methods, because the leads I had coming in were limited. And so I figured, well, if I can learn more methods, I can make better use of these leads and have some kind of fit for more of them. Right, right. So I just went... Well, that's you know, a path that, that, that most people take, right? They They... Well, in order to make this work, I must need to find more ways to monetize these deals. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And that's so it was a roller coaster. And we'd have a high of, you know, we'd get a deal or two. This is great. And we'd be so focused on maximizing that deal and making it work that our marketing efforts would kind of fall to the side. Um, we'd get our deals done and then fall into, you know, like a lease option. Well, you, you get an option payment, but then you get a monthly payment on that, hopefully with a spread. Sometimes not so much of one. Um, so you would have a bump in revenue, but then it would even out and not a whole lot. And then you would have you know, a furnace go out or you need to replace a roof, right? And take a big bite out of anything that you had in your, right. in your bank. So there's this vicious up and down cycle. Yep. I'm like, Something has got to change. This is not the, vision I, the, you know, the business I envisioned. Um, so I want to back up to um, the leads part being so important. Yeah. And I think what a lot of people do is they get into 
how you know how to do deals. How can I do this deal? How can I do that deal? How can I do rehabs? How can I do wholesales? Who cares? It doesn't matter until you have a seller on on the phone and a contract in your hand. None of that stuff matters because you're never going to do a deal without those two things. Right. And people don't realize that, so they get into this uh, repetitory, repetitive learning mode, learning how to do real estate. Right. And we've all been there. And I think if if things were done a little bit differently, um, you certainly need to know how how to flip a house or whatever it is. But get that one basis down, and then focus one hundred percent on lead generation. Because if you have the leads, you're going to find a way to close the deals. Right. People, we get stuff all the time. Well, I, how do I get money? I need money to, to do real estate. If you had a contract in your hand, you would find a way. If you had a contract in your hand where you could assign it or or do whatever with it and there was $10,000 on the line, you're going to find the money or you're going to find somebody to assign it to or you go, you're going to find the solution. Right. And people don't realize that. So yeah, I think it probably goes hand in hand with a lot of the education that's out there that says, you know, you can be successful with no money. But the reality is, is, you need money to be able to advertise or you need to be able to hire somebody to do it or do it yourself or whatever. You've got to, that's, that's where at least initially, of course, everybody thinks of the money part of financing a deal, but you've got to have money to operate your business, right? Yep. Yep. Well, and that's, that's key. I mean, just like, and I think that's another, another issue as people forget is even though this is a, a real estate business, it is no different than, than a subway. Or you know, like on a on a high level of McDonald's, right? Some big franchise. Right. It's it's no different. Right. And people, I think, mindset wise, oh, I'm going to try out this business. I'm going to I'm going to you know buy this course and try this out, not realizing that you know this is this is a business. And if you invest your um, you know your mental focus and your your entire focus of your business on this is a business. What's it going to take to actually build and run a real business? And if you look at it like that, well, it's going to take some capital to fund my advertising. It's going to take you know, some systems. And I think a lot more people would have results a lot quicker if they went about it that way instead of haphazardly. Yeah. Yeah, and that's so. it's interesting how most of the folks that train out there, they never – they teach more on the how to do deals or how to get creative, but they don't teach on the how to run the business side of it. And unless you do right. that, if you have anything, you have a hobby at best, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, and that's that's exactly what happens too, is because people will will stumble through a deal and get one done. Wow, I got one done, and then you know another and another, just like I did. And I don't know that might be what you did too, right? In the beginning, that's what you're doing is stumbling through, and then you realize, wow. I'm making some money here. Maybe I need to get a business entity, or gosh, right. I'm going to have to do it. Right? Or yep. I'm going to have to deal with taxes. Or all of a sudden, it becomes a business. Instead of going in first with this is my business, it becomes a business, and then you have to backtrack and make up for all of the business components that you didn't have in place before. Because right. all of a sudden, you realize I have a business now. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, either way, you get it done. But it'd be nice to start out as a business. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more successful. So let's talk about, let's kind of continue on here with, with leads. So you, you obviously understand how critical it is and ultimately evolve to helping other people generate leads for their business. Yeah. So, so for us, um, we were in that space doing direct mail and bandit signs and all of that stuff. And uh, it works, right? It still works to this day. Uh, it's a little bit different now because what, what has happened is, and I think there's probably been one or two cycles since I've been an investor since 2002, but you'll have you know, real estate trends just like any market. So when the trend is down, oh, real estate's no good, market's bad. Right. Nobody wants to do real estate investing, right, because it's not pretty. But when you hear in the news or you know, things like that, oh, man, real estate's hot right now, or there's you know, low inventory, or you know, the media drives this stuff. So you might hear that real estate is the place to be, just like stock market or whatever. People want to invest in stocks because they hear it's hot, right? Same with real estate. So what happens is they hear that the real estate market is great, so people think, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start investing in real estate or I'm going to become a real estate agent or whatever it is. They get involved in real estate. <clears throat> well, what happens is everybody else is too, right? right. Because they've, they've seen the same media or they've heard the same information. So they, people want a business, right? So they think, well, real estate, I've heard that's a great medium. So they start getting invested in real estate and uh, start learning about real estate. What do they do? They go online and they start doing searches and they find uh, some teachers who teach real estate stuff. 
and they, they buy a course or they get in forums and they start learning. Well, here's a course on how to flip houses or whatever it is. What do you learn? Well, here's the kind of mail you need to send out. Here's who you need to mail it to. You know, here's where you get the mailing lists, right? Here's the letters. Here's the envelopes. Here's all the stuff. <laughs> right. Right? So everybody is doing the same thing. And now you have homeowners that are being targeted by the same people getting 5, 10, 15, 20 exact same or very similar letters. And the homeowner's like, what the heck is going on here? Yeah, it's, it's confusing to them. And um, using the methods we use, we've talked to homeowners like that. And they're just like, it's just the weirdest thing. I get all these postcards that look exactly the same, especially like in the foreclosure market or something like that or yeah. absentee owner. Um, so what we found is that everybody is kind of fishing in the same holes. And that stuff still works, the direct mail and, and things like that, but you have to do it in a specific way that everybody else isn't doing too because otherwise you have competition. And now you're, you're fishing in the hole that everybody else is. The homeowner knows that. And now the homeowner now has a commodity versus being motivated. i got to get rid of this thing. He's got a lot of people that are right. interested. So he knows he's got a commodity. Now it changes. Now you're chasing him and trying to outbid everybody else. That's not real estate investing that I want to be in. Right. So that stuff works fine, but what happened with us is um, you know, we were finding a challenge getting enough lead volume to be able to do enough deals to grow our business and not just kind of sustain it. So I started learning about online marketing. And I realized back then, this was like 2004, I realized that, you know what, all this, this Google thing and all this is new, but I'm using it. You know, if I want to find something, I'll go to Google and I'll search for it whether it's a local business or whatever. And that things were pretty new back then because it was you know, 10, 11 years ago. But I, I knew that there's got to be a market out there for it. So I started digging into it and I realized that, wow, there's, there's companies out there that you can pay for, you know, pay to be a member of their site or whatever and get leads. And so we did that for a while. Wasn't happy with the results. So I decided I'm going to figure this out myself. And we, we just spent two years digging in and figuring it out. I, I you know, went to these online marketing boot camps and stuff like that and learned how to market online. And uh, so 2006 was our breakout year because we put everything to use that, that we had learned over those two years. And we had our first seven-figure year in real estate in 2006. Hmm. And that was 80% of that was driven by online marketing, which back then was unheard of. So um, from there went into, um, you know, I was in peer groups. A lot of us are in peer groups or masterminds or whatever you want to call them. A great place to be, right? They're very beneficial. Right. But when I was in, in one of my meetings, um, it came my turn to talk about my business and my challenges. And I basically told my group, I said, you know, I don't really have any. Everything's going great. Can I share with you what I'm doing? And like, yeah. So we plugged my laptop into the overhead or whatever. And I showed them how I was doing stuff online. And they're, you know, got done. All their jaws were on the table. I'm like, what? And they're like, dude, this is amazing. Will you do it for us? That started my teaching and fulfilling of how to do online marketing. And so, so it was great. So you have, the, the big thing is you have outbound marketing. And this, this is where I want to make a good point. You have outbound marketing, which is what we're all taught. So you have direct mail and, and bandit science and newspapers and all that stuff. What we're doing when we use that is we're chasing, right? We're chasing the homeowner. And just like, you know, guys, if you want to get the girl or girls, if you want to get the guy, when you're chasing them, they're not really interested, right? But when you're like, eh, I'm not interested, what do they do? No, 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 come back. Right. It's, it's no different. So when we're chasing them, think about this. And, and this, I get reminded of this every week. You know, there's that one or two days of the week that is junk day in the mailbox, right? And so you go to check your mail and there's the, the coupon book and the, and the newspapers with all the junk and all that stuff. I'm like, God, here we go. I just got to go re recycle this stuff again and I got to carry it back to my house and hopefully not drop it in the street on the way. And, and then sometimes you get like a, uh, you know, one of the checks or whatever, the fake checks that has your name and address and stuff <laughs> right. at the window. Like, ah, you know, I can't just throw this away. Now I have to open it up, tear my name out, shred my name and stuff because I don't want to throw that in the recycle. It's frustrating. And I feel like I am being, um, you're, you're imposing, I don't know if that's the word, you're infringing, that's what it is, you're infringing on my space, get out of my mailbox, yeah. right? You're bugging me. I just want to get my mail that's important, and it's my mailbox, get out of it. When you think of it that way, it's no different, right? That 
when somebody has an issue that they want to resolve, they don't go to the mailbox looking for the issue, or they don't go driving around looking on 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 um, on um, telephone poles for bandit signs or whatever. They they go to Google, right? That's what we all do now because we've been trained to do that. Right. It's huge, and that's inbound marketing. So that's when the homeowner they are in a spot whether they wake up at two o'clock in the morning or they're at work or whatever it is. They're going to pick up, you know, they're going to pick up their phone and they're going to type in uh, how to sell my house fast or whatever it is, and that's the key because they're ready, right? Um, that's why outbound marketing, you know, I'll send five, six, seven pieces of mail to the same person. Why? Because you're trying to hit them at the right time. Right. And eventually you do some, but that's why you have to do it repetitively. Where this, there's only once. And yeah. if you're there when they search, you win because it's timing and it's their timing. So instead of our timing, we do it on their timing. They're ready. We're there when they search. And that's when they pick up the phone and call. So it's a completely different mindset, completely different game. Because now that they're calling you, not from a mail piece or something, the ball is 100% in your court they think that you are the only game in town or one of them. Yeah. So yeah, totally different. And, and even, even inbound marketing, online marketing, I mean, that's changed dramatically <laughs> over the past, you know, few years where seemingly, um, everybody and their brother could, you know, anybody could pop up in a bedroom somewhere and be a really, a, a, at least look like they're a dominant player based on the quality yep. of their squeeze pages and marketing and their website. Yep. Um, to where they could literally look like they're as big as anybody, but it's it could they may be the smallest guy in town, but they don't look that way. So talk a little bit about kind of the evolution of um, internet marketing for real estate investors over the past few years. Yeah, so with um, you have a lot of different platforms out there that uh, that you can use, and with online marketing, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can you can also do outbound online marketing in the form of like Craigslist and things like that, where you can actually go look for motivated sellers and things on Craigslist. Um, what we prefer, and that's a method that, that certainly works, um, you have to be diligent about it, but you can get leads that way for sure. For us, um, we like to position ourselves as a local business because people think about when you need a dentist or an auto repair person or whatever it is, you go online and you do a search and you're looking for specific things. Well, we're trained to see specific links now when we search for solutions, especially like a business. And if you if you appear that way, and when somebody searches for you know how to stop foreclosure or sell my Denver house fast or whatever it might be, um, you'll win by looking like that local trusted business. And there's multiple ways that you can show up online. Uh, one is you obviously need to have a website. And I remember. Even back when I first started, I probably went to my first event in maybe 2003, and some guy was selling websites on stage, right? Um, back then, they were probably useless because, well, how do I get people to see my website? Well, you put your website on your business card, or you <laughs> right. put your website, remember that? Or you put your website in your direct mail. So nobody knew how to find your website unless you sent them there with a business card or told them about it. So it was basically a big business card online. Um, nobody knew that because it sounded great from stage, right? Right. Um, so you need um, a website. It needs to be functional, not too busy, right? I think that a lot of, um, we used to work with local businesses a lot, and that was the challenge is you have these professionals that are very educated that see their competitors having these, you know, really pretty flash animated sites. And, oh, I need one of those. I'm like, no, you don't. You know, it's, we've, we've tested this many times and here's what works it's a nice clean site that looks professional that doesn't have a ton of distractions and bells and whistles so you can have way too much pretty on a website and people don't understand that yeah. you need to have a very clear uh, crisp website with that's consistent with what they're searching for an example is if somebody does a search on um, how to stop foreclosure in Denver. Let's just some using Denver. How to stop foreclosure in Denver. And your your result is one of the, the searches that show up and there, there's we'll talk about how to do that. But your website shows up in the searches and they, they click on that result and they end up on your on a web page that says we buy houses. Well you might do that, but they aren't necessarily looking to sell their house just yet. Right. right? Especially in the foreclosure market. We were in that market for years and you learn that 
you have to ease some people into that realization that, gosh, it, I guess it is best for me to sell my house. So if they're searching for stop foreclosure type of stuff and they end up on your site and your site is we buy houses, there's an immediate disconnect because that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a solution to their foreclosure. It's kind of a bait they're and switch, right? You, right. Yeah. Not in your mind, but in their mind. Right. Right. So they're going to click the back button and you've lost them forever. That's So the biggest thing is to have it correlate, have what they're searching for correlate with where they land. So that would ideally be they need to you know, land on a how to stop foreclosure page and a little bit of education about that. So have the page match what they're searching and then um, have definite calls to action on the page, whether definitely have you know a phone number at the top, some branding at the top with your logo uh, or at least a name of your business or something so you look professional. And then we love to have like a, a call to action in the form of a form, like a fast response form or something like that. So have that all that stuff at the top, the phone number on the top of the site, fast response form up there. And then if they scroll down, that stuff's all going to disappear, right? Because they're reading. So have it down below as well. Mm. So that it's always in view. Um, those are a couple of tips website-wise. A uh, website needs to have a minimum of five to ten pages, even if it's an about us page, a contact us page, what we do, right? Because Google just doesn't like sites that are one or two pages. They they won't even acknowledge them a lot of the time. So you need a real you know a real website with content on it. Um, that's a big piece. So step one for online marketing is you need a website, right? You need a website that makes sense, like I just talked about. And then you need to get that website to rank because um, this isn't 2003 anymore, and you can get your website to show up when people search. And there's ways to do that with search engine optimization, uh, we can get into that, um, pay-per-click, uh, you can do it with local listings that nobody even is touching yet in the real estate space, a uh, very powerful way. Um, so do you want to chat about some of those? Or? Well, why don't you, um, I'm not sure we'll have enough time to go into any of those in detail, but tell us a little bit about how, how do people differentiate themselves, because you can kind of see there's this evolution of online marketing and um, it's not too different from direct mail, right? Like now there are canned templates for websites out there that get customized a little bit with, for SEO optimization based on your market. And uh, a lot of the sites start to look the same. Um, and then it just comes down to who's, you know, most of those people, most real estate investors probably rely, you know this better than me, probably rely more on pay-per-click versus SEO because they don't want to spend their time creating content. They want to, I'll throw money at it and try to generate leads. And then it just comes down to who's willing to spend the most and duke it out the most in, in, uh, in terms of uh, pay-per-click, right? So how do people differentiate themselves? How do you see this kind of evolving over the next couple of years where it isn't just a matter of who's willing to pay the most for clicks? Well, there's a couple of pieces to that. And, and you're right about the templated sites and, and stuff like that. So there, there are some great providers out there that have websites that are SEO opt optimized and things and they are templated but the thing to remember about that is um, most of the time I mean I forget how many thousand counties there are across the United States right so even even if a lot of people have these same websites um, most of the time a person in an area isn't going to see more than one yeah they might but so let's say a person does a search for sell my house fast in Denver and there's two investors in Denver that happen to have the same website, um, and they're both doing pay-per-click. So, guy clicks on site one, guy or girl clicks on site one, and they end up on this site, read it, eh, okay, eh, I'm going to check the next one. We do that, right? A lot of times people sure. check the first and second, sometimes the third, and then they'll decide to make a call or whatever. So, they go back and click the second one, oh, this kind of looks just the same, but, <laughs> but it's a different name. Um, for We found that for the homeowner... That's um, a lot of times they realize that there's multiple companies out there that do what we do, and it doesn't deter them. Um, it's just about timing. You know, are they going to call on the first one? Right. Are they going to call on the second one? That's why we always go for the top two positions. If we're not one or two, we'll do some adjustments to do that. So having a, a templated site is okay as long as it's branded to you, has the calls to action because you're still going to get your results. But as far as pay-per-click goes, that's, that's where you can really be different because people think that with pay-per-click, uh, and if you're not familiar with that, people listening, it's, um, it's Google AdWords, and there's a lot of different platforms that do it, yeah. but Google AdWords is the 75, 80% big dog, right? They have all of the traffic. 
So you can actually, when you do a search on something and you see like the top three listings at at the top, it has a little right now. This changes, but it has a little yellow uh, thing next to it that says "Add" or "Ads." So those are ads, and you can actually pay to be placed there. So you can like write ads for your site, and hey, we buy houses fast, um, sell your house fast for a fair price, whatever. Call us today. Mm -hmm. You can get your ad to show up there. So when somebody clicks on it, you basically to show up in those top positions, you bid. You'll say, um, "I'll bid. I'll pay five dollars for somebody to click on my ad, or I'll pay six dollars." And so your ads will show up. Well, what most people think is it's all based on what am I willing to pay? And that's partly true, but the big thing is it's, it's all about a quality score. And Google is really focused on quality score. So if what we do is we break things down, and I don't want to get too technical or too deep into this, but what we do is break things down to where um, what most people do is they'll take uh, keywords are what people use. They're what you use if you search for a dentist. You might say um, best dentist in Denver or um, dentist with good reviews in Denver. Those are keywords, right? right? They're keyword strings. Well, everybody types in different things sure. depending on every person's difference. So they might type in sell my house fast Denver, how to sell my house in Denver, how to sell my Denver house without an agent. Those are keywords. And what most people do when they go after pay-per-click is they'll take you know, hundreds of keywords and they'll dump them all into one uh, campaign and like put one or two ads and those one or two ads, if somebody clicks on them, they go to the same web page. So remember I talked about relevance earlier. Right. You have, you know, let's say 100 different keywords all with one or two ads that all go to the same exact web page. That will provide a super low quality score from Google because it's all about relevancy. Google's Google's customer is not the people paying for the pay-per-click. Google's customer is the searcher, and they are determined to give that searcher a good user experience, right. which means relevance. Now, if you keep all that in mind, what we do is we break it down to one keyword gets three to five ads and one landing page. So literally, Sell My House Fast Denver would have three or four different ads Right, because we're always testing the different ads, and that sell my house fast Denver would go to a web page that is all about sell my house fast, hmm. and that gives us a much higher quality score. And what happens is we can go against somebody who's bidding ten bucks, and we can outrank them for four bucks a click. So now we can afford basically a lot more traffic than they can, so we get more leads than they can for less money than they will. Right, right. That's the secret behind the whole pay-per-click thing. Yeah, yeah, because so, Google is measuring how long somebody stayed on a page when they hit there, all, all that, that they bounce yeah. out, all those things. Uh, that, that basically, ultimately, is uh, is uh, is dependent upon the quality of your site and the quality of your pages and your content, right? Yes, and they Google knows it all. They they don't only know did they click on the ad, did they stay on the on the page for four seconds. They know how far down the page did they scroll. What links in the page did they click? Right, they know all of that stuff, and so they, they all of that stuff is part of uh, how Google ranks pages and yeah. makes them relevant. Yeah. yeah. Well, David, I think we could probably talk about this for a few more hours. Unfortunately, yes. we don't have that much time, but maybe you could take a few minutes here and just talk about people that are kind of hearing this that maybe are thinking, "Hey, I need to have a bigger presence to generate leads online." Um, mm -hmm. And they're probably you know maybe not technical and don't have a ton of resources and can't create tons of content. I mean, how do they get started? What do they do to uh, to just kind of start to dip their toe in the water or dip it in a little bit deeper than it is now? You know, I think there's um, there's definitely a lot of online research to do, but again, you're going to end up with so much noise and you're not going to be sure where to go. You know, it's like searching for a you know. A, solution to foot fungus or something. <laughs> You're going to find so many answers and what's relevant and what's not. You're going to have to dig through that a lot. So I think find uh, find a relevant company or business that does that. Um, a big tip is to stay away from companies that provide online marketing, like uh, to dentists and doctors and stuff like that, because they are used to charging a very high price because that market will sustain that. I mean, we would charge a couple of thousand dollars to set up a uh, website and things like that, and like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month to do SEO for them and things. So that that market is a high price market. Mm. So if you if you try to talk with people that service that market, you're going to be surprised at the cost. Okay. Um, for us, um, 
I mean, we de definitely have resources if you want to, uh, you know, share with people. Um, be happy to give some info on what we do. Um, we have a lot of different trainings and stuff like that that people can get started with. We have fulfillment programs and things like that. But um, go with go with a company that knows what they knows what they're doing in the real estate space. Um, I think a big tip is don't try and figure it out yourself because yeah. your your objective is to run your real estate business, not run your internet marketing business. Now, marketing is your business, but if you have you know an expert or experts running your marketing strategies, both online and offline, you can focus on what is making the revenue, which is talking to sellers, getting deals done, etc. Okay. And that was the the big thing that that rolled us over is starting to focus on the big picture and having other people do what was important. That's why we built a team. We built a marketing team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, David, I know, I know you, you have a couple of resources available to share with people to learn more about it. Um, can you share those with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if, uh, let's see, if, let me let me provide like a free resource resource kit. We have a great resource kit. It's a real estate investors resource kit um, where you can find motivated seller leads online uh, for free. And it, you can do that without a website and things like that. But it definitely some great resources there. And why don't we just have people go to themarketingcommando.com forward slash flip nerd. And there will be a free resource kit there that they can download. So it's themarketingcommando.com forward slash flip nerd. Oh, great. Okay. We'll get we'll yeah. make sure we add that uh, down below the page here for folks yeah. that are listening and didn't get to write that down either. Um, I don't want to be responsible for any car accidents. And a lot of people listen to it while they're driving. <laughs> so, okay. The market, the marketing commando.com slash flip nerd. We'll put a link on the page as well. So yeah. that'd be great. Yeah. They great. Just go down well, uh, David, um, uh, we might have to have you back for uh, part two sometime soon. <laughs> yep. So there's a lot of info to cover. Yeah, it's a lot to cover, but I think the the point is is that um, the the market has changed. Your cheese has been moved probably for a lot of real estate investors. If you're used to yes. relying on old old school tactics, which still work, right? But yeah. um, you, you've got to you know people are you just look at how you if you're listening to this, just look at how you research things. Anytime you buy something of any sort of significance or want to look anything up, you're probably Googling it or doing a search online to, to help you with that. And that's what, you, that's what your prospective sellers are doing too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, David, Hey, uh, any kind of final words of wisdom there? The, I guess I just gave some of my own final words of wisdom, but that, that you want to share with everybody. No, you're spot on. And I think going back to the very opening, uh, when we started this, this conversation is, um, leads are your business, whether whether you're a sandwich shop or you know a dentist or a real estate uh, professional or investor. I mean, think about the sandwich shop. If you have um, you know great sandwiches and all the best ingredients and all this stuff, and you just open your doors and you put a little sign out front that says you know great sandwiches, come on in. Your store is probably going to remain pretty well empty until you start getting the word out there with marketing and letting people know about your awesome sandwiches because people might want awesome sandwiches. They don't know you exist. So right. it is all about lead generation. So make that uh, a core of your business, not just how to do the real estate business, but how to market. Uh, start marketing your business and make that one of the core focuses, if not the core focus of your business, and watch it grow. Awesome, awesome. David, thanks so much yeah. for your time today. appreciate you sharing. Mike, I appreciate being here. Thank you so much. All right, my friend. Have a good day. Are you a member of Flipner.com, the most robust real estate investing platform in existence? where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market. You can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard. If not, please visit flipner.com and register for a free account. You can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipner.com.